Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. This video I never wanted and never planned to record, yet I'm recording it out of my frustration and also with the slight hope that some of my subscribers are familiar with the 3D printers and can help me tune up and set up my Trudon 2.0 printer. So long story short, after I purchased my Prusa MK4 3D printer, I quickly realized the potential of 3D printing and got myself involved into multiple different uh, computer-related projects. But for many of them, I needed a much larger 3D printer than Prusa MK4. After studying the market and investigating different options, I came to a conclusion that I wanted to build a Voron 2.4 or a Voron Trident. But also after studying this subject, I figured out that building a Voron would require at least 40 plus working hours, and I don't have time for that, I don't have capacity for that, and I don't have a workshop for that, because my office room is rather tiny. Digging deeper, I came across a YouTuber called YJK3D that covered a Trudon 2.0 printer. Inside this box is a partially assembled Voron 3D printer, and no, I'm not talking about a Voron kit. I'm talking about 30 minutes and we're up and running with a premium Core XY 3D printer. Even though YJK3D covered True Dawn 2.0 printer very positively, or at least mostly positively, I have got nothing but issues and nightmares with this printer. Of course, I have tried to get some help from Formbot, which are the seller of the Trudon printer, and didn't get anything. Their understanding of the problem and their support is absolutely atrocious and totally pathetic. The community Discord server is not ideal either, because it's just a bunch of people who are mostly using Voron printers and other Formbot kits, and they are not professionals to help with the problems with this particular machine. So let me just iterate a couple of issues with the Formbot support so you can understand how useless and pathetic they are. The Trudon 2.0 printer comes with a clipper system, so it needs a printer configuration. The default configuration they provide has two different macros to start print and end print. When I ask why we need two different ones and what to do with the one which is never used, they just said that they consulted the engineer and the engineer says that both of them are required. They cannot explain why it's required, when it's required and what does it do. It's just two different macros, one is called print start, another one is called start print. What I figured on my own is that one of them is used by Prusa Slicer profile and the other one is used by Orca Slicer profile. But the one that is used by Orca Slicer by default is simply not functional. Yet it's there and it just gives uh, complications and frustrations because they can't even explain what it is for, how it works and how to use it. The engineer also doesn't know what is adaptive embed mesh. So, Trudon 2.0 printer has large build volume, the plate is 350 by 350 millimeters, and I want to measure bed only at the print area, before each print, because the bed changes its dimensions depending on the printer heat and the bed heat. The suggestion is to measure entire 350 by 350 millimeters bed before each print. This is just utterly incompetent and they simply don't understand what Clipper has and how it works. They put something together, it somehow works, go figure it. They also offer only one PLA profile for Prusa Slicer. They don't have anything for Orca Slicer. They refuse to give me calibration prints such as uh, skew compensation, such as temperature tower, such as flow ratio and such as pressure advance. They simply don't know what it is, they don't know how it works, and they don't even understand when I'm asking for that. In Prusa Slicer, as I said, they had only PLA profile, and when I ask for PTG or ABS profile, they just recommend me to simply increase the temperature and use the same profile which is incompetent to the least, because when you use different plastics such as PLA, PETG and ABS, you most likely need to tune different settings such as flow rate, such as pressure advance and maybe something else, not just increase the temperature and give it a go. 
Okay, I guess it's enough of my rant, let me switch the camera and walk through my Trudon 2.0 printer and show you what kind of hardware issues I have got and what I had to deal with. First of all, one of the corners of this metal base were bent, so I had to figure out how to straighten it to install these aluminum extrusions. Second, even though I purchased Trudon 2.0 Pro, they sent me Trudon 2.0 with another tool head. This is a stealth burner and they sent me one with the afterburner. That means that I had to remove the afterburner, install the stealth burner, install the screen update and so on. And that means that I have wasted lots of time for these upgrades, which I wanted to save by going with the Trudon instead of a Voron. After replacing the two heads, I realized that these two belts had a different length and one of the belts was a slightly longer, so I had to disassemble it again, uh, shorten one of the belts, uh, reroute the belts and install them again. After that, I realized that this stepper motor went out of order and I had to complain to the form bot and get a replacement. After getting a motor replacement, I figured out that this cable also went out of order and I went and bought a replacement. Buying a cable replacement is one thing, but installing it is another thing. As you can see, these cables are going into this plastic cable chain and replacing the cable meant that I had to reroute the cables in this plastic chain. Even more time wasted, which I badly wanted to save going with a Trudon instead of a Voron. After that, once my printer started to somehow move and work, I quickly realized that this bed is not aligned for the new stealth burner head. I needed to move the bed slightly forward to be perfectly aligned and so this brush is actually in the correct position. Some people on Discord claim that they bed is attached to these extrusions using these nuts inside the extrusions. But in my case, the bed was attached straight to these extrusions with a hole drilled in these extrusions. So it was not possible to just move the bed a bit forward to adjust it for the new tool head. I had to figure out where to take these nuts, install them into the extrusions and then remount the bed, because before that the printer would just go into damaging the bed over here instead of wiping the nozzle. This belt tensioning mechanism is also pretty bad, because the belt is not centered in this frame and we have two bolts instead of one, it is very easy to get it misaligned and the tension between the bolts is different because the belt is either in the upper half or in the bottom half on the other side. I am also not happy with this filament supply route. As you can see, the filament sensor is over here and that causes this tiny loop where the filament is supposed to turn and then go into the printer. This gives an extra tension and the filament is not moving as smooth as uh, I would want it to. That's why I had to make this kind of solution to hand my roll with filament over the printer and supply the filament straight into the head. Additionally, this YN stop switch would not reach the wall and the printer would attempt to go into the wall infinitely. I had to glue here a piece of plastic so the switch is actually activated and printer detects its homing position. Even though I had to spend lots of time and needed lots of patience to fix all these mechanical issues, it's nothing compared to the main problems that prevent me from printing. The main problem is the extruder in this tool hat. I did not have time to disassemble it yet again and investigate what's wrong with the extruder because the extruder is supposed to be pre-assembled, pre-calibrated and working out of the box, so it's just very annoying that I need to dig in again, but I can clearly hear that this extruder is skipping steps when the printer is starting to print a bit faster and we have big under extrusion problems. Let's take a look at a couple of prints that I have managed to pull off out of this Trudon 2.0. So first I tried to print this uh, Voron cube and the attempt failed because that offset was too high and the print didn't stick to the bed. 
After readjusting Z offset, I managed to print this cube and it is kinda okay, but at the bottom you can see that there are a few crypt layers and we also have a, a bit of under extrusion signs at the bottom of the cube. It is not very visible because the cube is rather small and the print speed is not that great because with these kind of small distances the printer does not have time to accelerate. Nevertheless, right after this cube I sent the same exact print for a reprint and this time it failed because Z offset is no longer valid and the printer decided to dive right into the bed and decided to keep damaging it, so I had to cancel the print. After that I readjusted Z offset and bed mesh again and tried to print just this kind of a flat piece. And with this flat piece it is a bit larger, so the printer has time to accelerate. And here you can see the under extrusion problem much better. Here are just simply a few pieces where the plastic is missing, it's where the extruder is keeping steps and not extruding the plastic. Additionally, I also printed a couple of temperature towers. This one is using ABS filament and as you can see from 230 to 260 degrees the quality is absolutely atrocious. It is not only very bad quality but it's also very weak so it just falls apart. With much higher temps at about 270-275 we get kind of better results but it is still pretty bad quality. I could somehow accept it and keep tuning it if the printer would not dive into the bed on each next attempt and require a Z offset recalibration. This one is printed in PTG plastic and the quality is also not acceptable. Plus the temperature here is 255 degrees Celsius which is uh, somehow acceptable quality or maybe 250 would be okay. Exactly the same filament works just fine with my Prusa MK4 and the temperature for this one in Prusa is 220 to 230 degrees Celsius. Some of you may say that I have a wet filament and that's why I'm getting these kind of results, but in reality these are exact same rolls that I have freshly opened and used in my Prusa MK4 with absolutely no issues, but with this printer with this tool hat, with this extruder, with this nozzle, it gives me all sorts of issues and the print quality is simply not acceptable. In conclusion, I have to admit that Trident 2.0 is just an expensive mistake on my side and I truly wish that I would never bought this thingy. Right now it does not work and it just consumes the space in my tiny office. If you have any time, any desire or any possibility to help me set this thing up so it can actually print, I would really appreciate that. Alternatively, I can consider selling it at a heavy discount if you want to take it off my hands. The last thing I want to answer is a question that I heard the most, which one is better, Truton 2.0 or Prusa MK4? This question is very simple, because Prusa MK4 is a 3D printer. You take it, you print it. Even if you buy the assembly kit, you assemble it and you go into printing. Truden 2.0 is not a 3D printer. This is a bunch of hardware which is half manufactured, half verified, half working, half not working. You need to put everything together, set everything up together and make sure that everything works the way you want it and how you want it. At the same time, it is not a Voron 2.4, so you don't have all the flexibility and adjustability. With that I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, bye for now and I hope the next video will be more interesting.